It's about a four billion year story. Uh, I want to find out about the 99 other most successful species on the planet Earth apart from people. Let's all happening at about the same time. You see, by organizing information in a more natural kind of chronological way, using pictures and captions, you can follow your curiosity. So, what I would like to do... Now, the thing is, this story of life on Earth, which is this wall book here, uh, what I've done is I've, I use a storytelling technique whereby I choose the most amazing moments that I can think of in the story of life on Earth, and what I do is I associate each moment with an everyday object. Now, this I borrowed from ancient Greece, because if you went to school in ancient Greece, in fact, it's a sort of Oxford gown. I haven't yet walked through the quad of Christ Church with this on me, or into the cathedral or anything like that, during a service, but I'm tempted to. However, there we are. So this has got 14 pockets, and inside every pocket there's an everyday object. And the object is linked to one of the 14 most amazing moments in the story of life on Earth. And if I'm fortunate enough to have any volunteers to help pick my pockets, would anybody be able to do that? And you do not have to be over under 16. You are able to be sitting on the chair and put your hands up at the same time. That's quite all right. Okay, everybody, good. Then you go to the Earth. I have it here today in pocket number one. Can you believe it? Now, who's going to pick pocket number one now? This is very special. Very important indeed. Who's going to pick my pocket number one? Yes, the, at the back there. What's I hope you're all watching the most special thing on the planet Earth in pocket number one. Let's go for it, Xander. What have you got? <laughs> now, Xander has got a bottle of water. He might be a tiny bit disappointed. Are you a tiny bit disappointed? Maybe Xander was hoping for an iPod touch. Or maybe he was hoping for a bar of gold. But Xander, you've got a bottle of water. The most special thing because every single form of life has to have water to exist. All the chemical reactions you need for something to live happen in solution, which means they happen inside water. Even a tiny little germ or a bacteria has to have water to survive. So water is the most important thing. Now, Xander, we're going to do this slightly differently, okay? I'm going to put this back in the pocket. Whole story of life on Earth. Would anybody like to pick my pocket number three over here, for example? Uh, you could pick my pocket number three, couldn't you? That's fantastic. What's your name? Beth. Beth, okay, Beth, go on, go for it. Pocket number three, what have we got? A zip. Fantastic, Beth. We've got a nice big zip. Now, um, at the middle of these cells is something a bit like a zip in the middle of every single one of your cells. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you know what it's called, Beth? No. It's in the middle of every cell. It organises, controls everything. It's, called, it's made from DNA. Thank you very much, sir. It's called a... A nucleus. Fantastic. Your name is... Theodora. Okay, a nucleus. Fantastic. So you need some form of control. Now this nucleus, Beth, Theodora, has, is a bit like a zip. So in the middle of every single one of your cells, these complex cells, is a zip. And all the instructions of how to make a new cell are contained in like a code, which is DNA, in this zip. But you'll notice there are two sets of instructions. And basically these instructions are zipped up, so that if you need to go there, what's your name again? Ellie. Ellie, well done Ellie. You did so well with your answer before about the jar. Pick my pocket number four, see what you can find, and let's see what the story is going to be. Right, what have you got there, Ellie? Stone. A stone. Any old stone? What's that? A fossil. Ellie has a fossil. Do you know what sort of fossil it is? No. Fair enough. Does anybody know? It looks like a big beetle, lived in the seas 500 million years ago. What's it called? And it's an arthropod. It's a sort of ancestor to arthropod. Thank you, Jack. Fantastic. It's called a trilobite, Ellie. Fantastic. They're over here, do you see? And it's pointing. could see light from shade, but they couldn't focus light. Trilobites are thought to be the first creatures that could focus light, which means that if you imagine Jack is a trilobite and everybody else is a wiggly worm at the bottom of the sea, Jack can, for the first time, decide what he's going to eat for dinner. <laughs> Any idea what I've got in here is a jar. This one isn't empty. Uh, but, well, if you know what I mean. What have we got in here? I'm not sure. Now, it's, something, it's not wood. It's something you can buy in the supermarket. It's a type of food. It's not dried horse meat. It's nothing like that. What is it? Any idea? Not nuts? Jack? It's a... If I tell you the word that was on the label, porcini, does that help at all? Mushrooms. Mushrooms. Fantastic. And they belong to a family of living things called... What are mushrooms? Fungi. Fungi. Fantastic. It is thought that the spores of fungi living in the sea were blown by the wind onto the land and they could take root there. And some of the most amazing species in the world are these big purple fingers here. I don't know if you can see them. About 410 million years ago, they're called prototaxites. And these are fungi mushrooms that could grow as high as 40 feet high. Can you imagine a giant fungus 40 feet high and under the a cork? And Katie and I are going to do a very important science experiment. Are you ready? 
Would you like to turn around so everybody can see? Thank you very much. Now, this is, this is remarkably profound, this experiment, but that might be lost on you to begin with. Anyway, Katie, here is a cork, there is a bowl. What's going to happen to the cork when I drop it into the bowl? It's going to hit the bottom. Yes, let's see. Yes, it went straight down to the bottom <laughs> of the bowl. Okay, happy? Enough. Good. Right, now, I'm going to use some of this amazing stuff called water. Remember how amazing it is? We're going to fill up this bowl with water. And what are we going to do now? We're going to drop the cork in. What's going to happen to the cork? It's going to float. It's going to float. Look at that. It hasn't gone to the bottom of the bowl. Okay, everybody, do you believe me? Can you see? The cork <laughs> is floating in the water. Isn't that fantastic? Okay. Yeah, I know. It's remarkable, isn't it? It's wonderful. How <laughs> curious we all are. You see that? It's not, it hasn't gone to the bottom. Now, Katie, why hasn't the cork... Legs. legs! Fantastic! So a group of fish called the low fin fish that have four big fins here came out onto the land and they started to have to move around because there's no up thrust from the water on the land by pushing themselves up there. The first... This will truly blow your minds, everybody. Almost as amazing as a bottle of water. Here we go. What have you got? Changes the world. It's remarkable. What have you got? An egg! An egg. Do you see that here? Beth has got an egg! Now, this egg has changed the world because it means that amphibians like Beth no longer have to go to the water to lay their eggs. Instead, they put the water inside the egg. Isn't that fantastic? And then you can press up your way to the middle of Pangaea. Everything you need to make a little Beth is inside the packet. You see? An egg deep into that one. Okay, so you've got Rodolfo, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Pocket number eight. Can you imagine how boring the world would be without... Without flowers. Wouldn't the world be dull without flowers? Wouldn't it be terrible? <coughs> it would. And for 300 million years, you know, there were loads of plants on the planet Earth, but there were no flowers. Flowers are really quite a modern innovation in the plant kingdom. So all the way through here, we've got mosses, we've got bracken, we've got conifer trees, we've got monkey puzzle trees, we've got all sorts of things, ferns, all sorts of things. No flowers until here, 140 million years ago, at the same time as Dippy the Diplodocus. And then flowers emerge and they rapidly take over to become the most powerful group of plants on the planet Earth. Does anybody know what is the secret that makes flowering plants so successful, Amelia? Pollination. Pollination. Brilliant. Absolutely. It is to do with pollination. It's to do with pollination. It's to do with zipper swapping. <coughs> Remember we talked about zipper swapping? Now, let's imagine for the moment that uh, humans or homo sapiens that are able to use their hands to rub sticks together and to strike flints in order to make fire, which you can see here. And fire makes them the most powerful creatures, these two uh, legged uh, chimpanzee ape type creatures, because they can keep them warm, it can cook food, so we don't get poisoned by bacteria and viruses. And also, it scares away the wild animals. And then they can use their hands to make weapons, and then they can use their hands to make tools, and they start digging the ground and they start making tools and they start digging it out for things like iron ore and they start um, using their hands for planting crops and for building buildings and pyramids and castles and, and making machines and all kinds of things that have changed the world as a result of the fact that we are on our two feet and we have freely available hands. And that all goes back to climate change in the ice ages due to the lack of rainfall in Africa and the creatures who could stand up being the one. It's something that just brings us up into the future uh, and the present in the future and I have it here. Uh, I hope her pocket number 14 is going to pick like last pocket number 14 would be fantastic. We'll give it to a lady, Amelia, thank you very much. What have we got here to finish our story about life on Earth? Do you... It is a thermometer. Brilliant. And Amelia, you will notice I mentioned thermometers and there are my thermometer along here. goes all the way along here. And if you look very carefully and use your curiosity, you will see that generally speaking, the world, I beg your pardon, gets very cold when there are lots of mountains being built, when continents are colliding together, because the carbon dioxide in the monsoons is dissolved into the rain and returned to the seas and therefore the world cools down. And the world gets very hot when there are lots of volcanic activity and lots of volcanoes, because all that carbon dioxide that heats up the world gets spewed up into the atmosphere again. And so it goes in a cycle. But if you look carefully, you will see that the world is getting hotter again today. But there are no big volcanoes spewing out carbon dioxide. Where is the carbon dioxide that's heating up the world thought to be coming from today? Any idea? Sorry. Not the sun. Good try, Jack. Us. Us. Yes, things like cars, things like aeroplanes, things like power stations spewing out masses of carbon dioxide. But life will be okay. And why will life be okay? Because of... Zipper swapping. zipper swapping. Thank you, sir. Very good. What's your name? Martin. Well done, Martin. Brilliant. Because of zipper swapping. Diversity. That is the key. So if we destroy the diversity, then life is much more vulnerable to extinction when things change. But if we preserve the diversity, even if humans manage to sort of, you know, not uh, manage to keep up with it and they destroy the world for themselves, then at least life will be able to persist into the future because of the biodiversity and the zipper swapping. So all these things are in a sort of story through 14 pockets from through 4 billion.
million years. It's the uh, What on Earth War Book of Natural History, and I'd like to thank you all very much for your patience and for having me here today. I'm Priscilla. Thank you.